Let's go on over to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Praise the Lord. And why don't we start tonight with verse 23. Matthew, the 18th chapter and verse 23. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had and payment to be made. You can be seated. And... uh, Pay attention to what is being said right here. And uh, when you begin to think about it, especially when it came to verse 25, the Bible said, but for as much as he had not to pay, in other words, he could not pay this debt, his Lord commanded him to be sold. What for payment? Not only that, but when it came down to it, it was his wife that the Lord had demanded to be sold. His children had to be sold. And all that he had... And payment to be made. This man had ran up against a hardship. The Bible says, The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 27. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant, in other words, this man was forgiven by his master. Understand, the Bible goes on to say, verse 28, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. He laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. Verse 29, and his servants fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Bible says in verse 30, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very, very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. And so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. For if ye your hearts forgive not one his brother, their trespasses. We look at this story as it begins to unfold, and uh, we realize there is a debtor, and I will say this first debtor, he owed an enormous amount when we begin to calculate it out and break it down, but the debt was so great. Uh, I will say this, I I could not vision the first one even comprehending of trying to pay back the debt that was due to his master, but he had begged for mercy, and he asked the Lord, he said, you know, have some patience, give me some time, I'll get this debt paid. And uh, we realized the Lord had patience. His master had patience on him and uh, was willing to work with them. But not only that, he went further than what was expected. And according to the Bible, he had forgiven him of all his debt. Understand, we're talking about an enormous uh, uh, amount, I believe, when we begin to calculate it and break it down. If it was equivalent to the day's time, it'd be probably somewhere around a billion dollars. And uh, a lot of people don't really realize some things, and still they begin to break these things down and see what's what. But that master had such great compassion, and because of mercy that was begged of him, understand, he had given mercy unto this, this, understand, this one servant. But this servant had someone else, understand, that owed him a debt. And he was not as passionate as the master that had forgiven him. And he demanded the payment, friend. He said, look, you know, you're going to have to come up with this. You don't. 
And we realized that the Bible said that he had taken him and put him into prison and understand would not forgive him of his debt. Amen. You may say tonight, well, what is the purpose behind all of this? I believe that when we begin to look into this, there's a, a heavenly father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And friend, I will say this. He has forgiven you of your sins. He's forgiven me of my sins. Understand, he went to a cross, was nailed there. He paid the price for you and paid the price for me. The Bible had made statement in reference that we are not our own, but we were bought with a price. Uh, and the best example that I can ever look upon is going to be Jesus Christ himself, friend. Uh, understand, uh, if we have a problem forgiving people, then something's wrong with, with us. Understand, uh, sometimes we always think, well, hey, you know, what they owe me is a whole lot more. Uh, friend, I'm not talking about monetary, uh, but I'm talking about, friend, just things within life itself that seems to come along that if we're not careful, we begin to harbor some things. And understand, I want to get into this just uh, somewhat deeper and talk about some of the consequences. And I will say this, uh, there is a difference with somebody that forgives somebody else. I believe there's a release that takes place. Uh, understand, I believe that they can move on and go on within life, but I will say to many people in the day and hour in which we're living, and even within the church, those that don't learn to forgive and to release some things will only be set back in God and never progress on until they get past that state. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can always look at our hurts and look at, look at everybody else's faults. But I will say this, uh, friend, first examine yourself when it comes to everything. The Bible says in Genesis, the 37th chapter, looking at verses 19 through 20. The Bible said, and they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. They're referencing, understand, Joseph himself. And the Bible says in verse 20, come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say... Some evil beast had devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Can I say this right now? When it came to Joseph, understand, he had not done anything wrong. Uh, we realized earlier before, and uh, uh, he had revealed to his brothers in regards to the dream that the Lord had given him, and uh, they did not like the dream which was given and basically had got underneath their skin. And uh, can I better say that Joseph is saying, hey, look, one day you're going to bow before me. I will say this. If I was an older brother, I think it would kind of bother me too. But I think also being in life where many of us are, you know, just let it go and move on. Hallelujah. Consider the source and let it go. But we have a problem here with all the other brothers of Joseph. Understand. And uh, they themselves had determined within that they were going to persecute him. Understand, do, do harm against him, do evil against him. Understand, and uh, I will say to the church tonight, that definitely is not the will of God. But over in John 16 and 33, it says, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. We realize when it comes to Jesus that there's not anything that's new underneath the sun. Understand, friend, nothing is new than what it was, friend, 100 or 200 years ago. But we understand that the Lord had overcome the world. And such as he had overcome the world, we ourselves can overcome the world in Christ Jesus. But um, I will say this, there's always going to be problems. That's going to be common to the human family. Uh, there's always going to be situations that are going to take place. But nevertheless, let's move on and do what God would have us to do. The Bible had made reference, understand, and, and um, that reference was that when it comes to the end time, and I definitely believe that we are living in the end time, uh, the word had made reference for many shall be offended. Uh, many shall be offended. We can reference tonight about the earthquakes, and we can reference, friend, about the wars upon rumors of wars, and we can talk about the famine and the pestilence and everything else that's going on in our world. But, you know, the one thing we don't talk a whole lot about, understand according to what Scripture has says, that in the end time, many shall be offended. But think about this, friend. Most cases within a church, 
It doesn't matter if it's a Baptist. It don't matter if it's a Lutheran. It don't matter if it's an apostolic. I will say this. People themselves are very self-conscious. And friend, understand, if, if they don't have Christ that is active and working in their life, somewhere along the way, they're going to become offended. And when they become offended, friend, things are going to happen within their spirit. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 8, it makes reference that we should watch out for the attacks from the devil. Why? Because he's our great enemy. He's the adversary friend. The Bible says that he does roam around like a roaring lion, seeking to whom he may devour. But friend, I'll say this. Uh, some things are not hard to understand. I believe there's things that we've got to cope with, friend. And especially when it comes to our brothers and it comes to our sisters. Now, I want you to look around this place tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a good chance that many of you are going to be offended by someone in this building. Than somebody that's outside of these doors. Come on, it happens in apostolic churches. Amen. And the Bible says in Psalms 55, looking at verses 12 through 14, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Understand. You know, if it's an enemy, then that's something else because, you know, hey, we'll pick it up and go at it and do what we need to do. But reference is made here, it was not an enemy that reproacheth me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. It wasn't somebody, uh, understand, that was of distance. It wasn't somebody, friend, that uh, I didn't know. But it was someone in my own kind, if I can put it that way. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that then I should have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together, and we walked in the house of God in company. The Bible is saying there, right in reference, friend, uh, that, that understand there's going to be those that are within an assembly that understand the ones that are closer to you are going to be the ones that are going to affect you more. Let me just break that down just a little bit more. We have many people in our world today, friend, many people in the city of Meridian. But many of those people are not going to affect you the same way as someone that is in the church, friend, that is going to affect you. Come on, I know what I'm talking about, hallelujah. If anybody can cut to my heart, if anybody can get to me, friend, it's going to be somebody that's going to be close to me. And I'll say right now, sometimes there's a danger within that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If there's anybody I ever got to pray over more, friend, it's got to be me. Come on, next to it, I need to pray for my brother and pray for my sister and say, look, God, it's, I, I want you to forgive me as you forgive me of my trespasses. Well, it's, it's a little, little kind of say reserved here tonight. We're hitting on a few things. You know, we're, we're, we're chipping it away just a little bit and that's just one of the jobs when it comes down to the ministry, friend. But uh, amen, hallelujah. Somebody, you just as well throw your hands up and say praise the Lord anyway. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. You know, somebody at work, you know, it's one thing. That's just them. But my God, when you walk in the house of God and, and somebody's got the gift of the Holy Ghost and, and something gets underneath their skin, I want to tell you something. Something is wrong within your spirit. And the Lord is saying, I, I forgave you of all the debt that you've ever owed, friend. And understand, I forgave you of your sins. So look past that person's faults and understand, as much as I've forgiven you, I, I want you to forgive them. Hallelujah. Some of you tonight might know what I'm talking about, but especially if you got, what do you call it, honey? Texagram, what do you call it? Instagram, thank you. Instagram. Uh, but I seen something humorous on my wife's phone, and, uh, and, you know, it was Jesus Christ himself, he was sitting in a seat. And he's got his crown of thorns that's upon him. He's got blood that's all over his face. He's got cuts. He's got the thorns, friend, upon his head. He's got the nail prints, friend, in his hands. And there's somebody that's sitting right next to him. 
And they are so in their own world, and all they're doing is looking at the faults of somebody else. And the Lord is sitting there and saying, look, don't you understand what I've done for you? What's your problem, friend? Why don't you just wake up and observe what I've done for you? And as much as I have forgiven you, why don't you just let it go, honey? Why don't you just suck it up, friend? And understand, understand, I forgave you so much more. It always amazes me how much bigger our problems are than what God's forgiven us. And my God, if we would go back and do the calculations of what God did for us and forgave of us, friend, I believe we're going to realize we come up short. Good preaching, Brother Mascroft. It's just the truth. Just well tell it like it is, okay? But the Bible said, you know, we took sweet counsel together. We sat together in the house of God. And we walked into the house of God in company. My God. You, you, you know what happens in people's lives when they begin to get, a, get infected? The altar isn't taking place like it should. No, you didn't hear what I said. I said the altar is not really taking place like it should. I didn't say you weren't putting your time in the altar. But what I'm saying is, when it comes to the quality time between you and God, and letting God work upon your mind, your soul, and your spirit, friend, and can I say this? We let God take the jackhammer, friend, and somewhere begin to chisel away the stone heart, friend, and the blinded eyes that we got. I'm telling you something, friend. It's in that altar that God can take care of a lot of things. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. And all because of offense. Amen. Can I better say, in the Greek word, scandalon, it means a stumbling block. Something that causes one to fall. Something contrary to expectations that bring disappointment. Or something that triggers of a trap. My God. Woo! That's loaded, man. My God, contrary to expectations that bring disappointment, my God. You know, in one part of the word, it says it's foolish to compare ourselves one to the other. Well, you know, pastor, they just don't measure up to what I believe they ought to measure up. Whoa. Whoa. My God, can I first ask you a question? Do you measure up to what God asked you to measure up to? Come on, let me, let me, just, let me just talk to you, okay? I believe if we would do a lot more self-examining, okay, and a whole lot less looking on other people, Come on. I believe if we could pray a whole lot more over this old boy and over that old girl. I believe if we could cut out a lot of chit-chat sessions with somebody else in the church about your feelings and how you are, I believe we'd see a greater move of God in this house. Come on. I believe God's trying to wash some things. God's trying to do some things, friend. But I'll say this. Somewhere we need to learn how to forgive some people. You don't understand my hurt, Pastor. No, I don't, but he does. No, I don't, but he does. Amen. Luke 17 and 1, it said, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. The offense is coming through here. Oh, my God, you're listening tonight. Thank God. There is not an individual in this place, friend, that's exempt. My God, I'm preaching to all of us, aren't we? I'm preaching to this preacher. Come on, let me be honest with you. My God. The Bible says right here, friend, but woe unto him through whom they come. You see, offense is like the bait in a trap. I 
I know, I know y'all never had this problem in your home before, but um, in some of the homes that my wife and I have lived in, and we do believe in being neat and being clean, but you know, sometimes you're going to get a mouse in that house. You know, I thank God for mouses at times. It gives your wife a good scare. Jump up on a chair and that little old thing just whirring around and got your victory. <laughs> kind of like the devil, friends. <laughs> the devil's got your victory, okay? But, you know, back in my day and time, and I'm, I'm not sure what they got nowadays, but, you know, they had these little contraptions. You pull the lever back. It had a little thing to hook on. And you put some cheese on there, okay? And... Um, <sighs> Let me just say this, okay? Amen. Offense is like the bait in a trap. It's harmless. Now listen to the rest of the story. It's harmless. That bait can sit on that trap forever, friend. Mm, you can't, you can't, I'm going a little slow so you catch on, okay? Understand, you can pull that lever back, you can hook it, friend, and you can put that bait, friend, just right on top of that trap, and it's not going to hurt you a bit until you start feeding on it. And, friend, when you begin to start feeding on it, you better watch out because that thing's going to come back and slap you crazy. I don't care how bad you are. I'll say this probably about 85% of the time. That trap is going to catch that mouse. That mouse might get away, but he's stupid enough to come on back and to try it again. And I'll tell you what I've seen sooner or later. That mouse get himself trapped and find death within his life. But friend, nothing happens until he begins to feed on it. And friend, it's deadly when it's consumed, if you're fortunate to get that far. And friend, it, it's a fact of human nature. Now let me talk to you, okay? It's a fact of human nature that the closer the relationship, please listen to me to not church. If there's anything that you're going to get a hold of, I want you to get a hold of what I'm going to say right now. I said it is a fact of human nature that the closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. Did you catch on, friend? My God, this is why problems among brethren can be so severe. Brother Mascroft, how come you don't get too close to anybody? Uh-uh. Man, I got my own problems. I'll be honest with you, I don't need to spend all year praying through over you. You guys can pray through over one another. But you mark the words of this preacher. And I understand, I'm encouraging fellowship. But I want you to understand, get ready to get offended. I said, get ready to get your feathers ruffled. My God. I'm getting there, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? You know, you ever heard that saying, it's like water off a duck's back? You're going to have to become like a duck. And my God, when that offense comes along and that water begins to run off your back, you better just let it go. But my God, if you suck it in. Oh, my God. Can I be, I'll be blunt with you, friend. I've had people. Understand, I'm not talking about any of y'all, but yeah, yes, you know. But I won't use any of those tonight. Just like you won't use any of me tonight. I mean, I know it, it points both ways, okay? But I'll tell you something. I've learned some things the hard way. 
I should have never had to go through. And you know why? It's because I allowed it. How are you feeling tonight over your brother or sister? Don't answer that question. My God, when you go to church, can you hug their neck every time? Can you, can you, sister, can you hug that sister? And brother, can you hug that brother and shake his hand? Or is it like, you know, that's a symptom. You know, if the pastor was to diagnose you, you may not like the prognosis. But come on, let me be honest with you, okay? It's good preaching tonight, friend. My God, hallelujah. And Jesus said it's impossible to live in this life and not have, and not have the opportunity to be offended. The question is not, are you ready? Will you encounter this trip? It's not if. But the point is, how are you going to respond to it? And that's the problem. My God. You know, I know when people are dodging me. Any of y'all ever played dodgeball before? My God. Hallelujah. I mean, you go to church and you're so excited and praise the Lord. You're looking to shake everybody's hand and all of a sudden... Somebody had to make a U-turn and use the restroom. Or somebody turned around and began to talk to somebody so fast to shirk it off. Come on, friend. I've been there. I know what it's about. I'm not stupid. My God, we're human, aren't we? So can I say this? I've got an extra straw in my office. As a matter of fact, I think I've got maybe just enough for everyone in this place tonight. <laughs> you know, Sister Erica, it's one thing to give me those straws. No, no, excuse me. No, no, you're the one that said suck it up. Brother Brian, you may, it's easy for you to give me those straws, but it's another thing to suck it up. Well, Brother Master, how come you don't get too cl close? You know, I got enough troubles. You know, and I'm just, I'm taking this slow tonight, okay? My God. And, it, you know, as sure as I'm standing, probably by the time I get home tonight, I'm going to be offended. Somebody's going to come up and say something due to the message. You know why some of you avoid me? I must have offended you. <laughs> oh, my God, we could really go from one end to the next. You know, it's, it's hilarious. I got people that will come talk. My brother asked off, I don't know why such and such and such and such. Uh, I don't either, but why don't you go ask them? Oh, no, well, what you, don't you think that? Mm, I didn't say that. You don't need to assume something. But why don't you just go ask them? Well, then they'll know I'm a fit. Well, that's good. Get it worked out. Ooh. Oh, my God. It's so true. Amen. The Bible says one of the things, signs in the end time, will be they'll be offended. Matthew 24, 10 through 13. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, iniquity meaning lawlessness, the love of many shall wax cold. But he, shall, but he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Well, you know, Brother Matthew, I'm just going to endure and get, I'll get through it. Why don't you do like, Brother Brian, you don't have to leave. I mean, 
Amen. Amen. But why don't we do it like the Bible says? You know, forgive that person. You know, I'll say this. I always look at, I always consider the bigger person being the one that takes the step above. Are you understanding where I'm coming from? My God. You know, forgive me, but I hate going to church and being hypocritical. Ooh. What do you mean? You know, can I say this? Why don't you just shuck it off? You know, it's kind of like a corn, ear of corn. You know, you go down to Albertsons and you buy them two for a dollar, three for a dollar. Start shucking it. You know, take your life and shuck it, friend. My God, get rid of it. Let it go. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 19. A brother, a brother offended. Now listen to this. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. That ain't the rest of the story. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Think about that for a moment, okay? When a brother or a sister gets offended, it's harder to win somebody like that because, you know, their contentions are like the bars of a castle. You just can't seem to get them out because they're trapped within it. And, and friends, they don't want to get out of it because they want to harbor it. Understand, we construct walls when we're hurt to safeguard our hearts and prevent any future wounds. But can I say this? Is it right? It is not right. Why? Because walls in a person's life has got to come down. I'm protecting myself, Brother Mascroft. Why don't you just find yourself an altar and pray through and suck it up and do what you need to do and get those walls taken care of so you can start loving your brother and your sister? We become selective. Understand. We become selective, de denying entry to all we fear that will hurt us. We filter out anyone we think that gives us something. We withhold access until these people have paid their debts in full. And can I say this right now? Some debts will never be paid in full. So does that make you right before God? It does not. Come on, I think we ourselves, by being a bigger person in God, can do like the master did and forgive that servant, friend, no matter how big or how great that debt is, and move on, friend, and be the Christian in God that we're supposed to be. My God, if we could get rid of all of our pettiness, friend, and get rid of all of our idleness, and get rid of everything that bothers us. Well, you don't understand, Brother Mascroft. My God, I'm glad I'm not God. And I'll tell you what, because, man, I'd, you drive me crazy. You drive me crazy. Amen. And, friend, let me say this. Eventually, our walls of protection, because we're guarding off anybody that might hurt us, we're guarding off anything that we're fearful of, Eventually, our walls of protection become a prison. My God, you know, I'll tell you, forgive me, but and I hope it never happens. I don't know if I can make it in a prison. You know, be closed in with walls all the way around. My God, I don't know how some people can handle it. I'd just rather... Forgive me in life and get it over with. But you know, when it, when it comes to people trapped within that prison, friend, they, there's bars there in that room, and they can look out and they know what they need to do, but they become captivated by those four walls. Can I say this right now? It is not the will of God. It's the will of God to get past those four walls, become the bigger person that you're supposed to become, release whatever you got, friend. Let God have it and forgive whatever it is. Hallelujah. My God. If left unchecked, 
and I've seen this, offense will turn into bitterness. It's Brother Maskoff. As a pastor, I have never had to deal with a harder spirit than bitterness. Next to it, jealousy. But bitterness being the most difficult spirit to deal with. My God. I remember one woman, I'm not going to say her name, You're not, she's not here tonight. So check your name off, I'm being nice, okay? Okay. But man, I'll tell you what, every time I got up and preached, and I am not exaggerating, How would you like that ugly spirit looking back at you and trying to get the church on the next level? Can I say this? As a preacher, if you're not careful, it'll bring you down. And I began to think about that, and I said, you know what? I've done everything that I know how to do, and I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm not going to let that one person hold this church back. Come on. You know, if a person wants to stay there, let them stay there. What do you do, saying to God? You're going to preach around them. You're going to go above them. You're going to do whatever you got to do, friend. If they want to stay where they're at, let them stay where they're at. But, friend, I want to see revival in this last hour. I want to see God do the mighty work he wants to do. Before, man, I'll tell you this. Before it was like, come on, bulldog, let's go for a fight. It don't work. You, if, you, even if you kill them, you're going to kill somebody else. And I'll tell you something, friend, it is not the will of God. It is not the will of God. But many people understand will become in that prison, okay? Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore many be defiled. Now, I want to make a few more statements. You know, if roots are, nur- are nursed, anybody know what roots are? Man, I got a front yard. I'm still trying to get the roots out. We took a tree, we cut that tree down, got a stump grinder. Now listen to me, okay? I got done, there's still more roots. I, I, come on, friend, that tree was rooted. That tree, I mean, it had, are you listening to me? It didn't have one root, but it had many roots, okay? But roots are, if roots are nursed, if those roots are watered, those roots are protected, Fed and give it attention. They increase in depth and strength. You know, there's something spiritually that's not supposed to happen within our life. You, you better be careful, friend, what you're rooting. Because bitterness can have a lot of roots that's going to get really deep, friend. You just nurse it, you just water it, you just protect it. And I'll tell you this, you're hurting yourself. If not dealt with quickly, roots are hard to pull up. As the offense grows, many people are corrupted. My God, I'll tell you, you don't know how many picks I've tore up. You don't know how many shovels I've messed up. You could take, you could take a six-foot one of these wrecking bars, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something, friend. When it comes to some roots, you ain't getting those roots up. You're going to have to get something bigger and more powerful. And, friend, I'll tell you this right now. The most powerful thing there is is Jesus Christ. There's not a root that's too deep, that's too big, that God can't handle. Oh, come on. Come on, friend. I'm giving you something tonight if you really want to chew on it. Come on, we're getting into some depth into this, friend. And I think we need to understand there's some things that we don't need to to somewhere to harbor. And friend, if they're not dealt with quickly, understand it's going to be hard to get up. 
One guy had said, you know, bitterness is unfulfilled revenge. I'm going to hang on to what I got. You hang on to that devil if you want. And that devil will kill you. You listen to me. People not sitting in apostolic churches today over peddly things. Let me talk to you, okay? And maybe I can just use Brother Bates, okay? No, no offense, Brother Bates. Well, I'd use you, but you would get offended. You know, it, when it comes down to it, he's not the problem. Well, you know, he hurt my feelings. Well, so? Did God not give you enough Holy Ghost to get over it? You know, there's, just, there's something about Brother Bates. I just don't like the way he carries himself. Well, what's your problem? I didn't say what his problem is. Well, well you know, it's, it's just, I don't think it's fair him being the assistant to the pastor. Oh, so you think you ought to be? Ooh. Are you catching on? You know, people reveal themselves. And you know, the more I reveal to you, the more careful you're with me. But you'll slip up sooner or later. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my God, we got such a perfect church. That's why I've never got to do surgery. You know, last, uh, forgive me, I'm just taking my time tonight. I'm not in no rush. But last February, my wife went in and, uh, you know, she had had foot surgery, had a bunion on it, and had it shaved. And uh, the doctor got done. He took a piece of metal, screwed it somewhere in the foot to the joint somewhere. I don't know all that lingo. And, uh, but he put that metal pl- thing in there to, so it'd be safe. It'll help mend it together, keep it together, and do what needs to be, okay? And then, yes, well, a few days ago, she went in. Yesterday, I think it was. I'm losing my, my mind. She went in, and they cut the metal out because it was aggravating her so much. <laughs> you catch the message? It's funny how some people start catching on. You know, if something's aggravating you, cut it out. Cut it out. Don't grin back at me. You look so beautiful smiling. It's a whole lot better than you growling at me every service. I got a dog, Pepper. He does enough of that at home. He'll come up, and I'm eating a little something. He'll look at me. I said, shut up. Oh, he'll go up to my wife, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, he'll really work her up. He don't shut up. He just gets worse and worse. And I look over at him. I said, shut up, Pepper. Well, you're kind of mean, Brother Mascroft. Well, sometimes you got to kill some spirits. <laughs> you know, Pepper, you're frustrating me. You know, I'll say this. Sometimes you got to get mad at the devil and look the devil in the face. Say, devil, I'm tired of being frustrated by you. Nothing wrong with getting mad at the devil. There is something wrong getting mad at your brother or sister. Well, Brother Baskoff, if you don't understand, my brother and sister's a devil. Oh, God, here we go. Okay, you're the perfect angel. You know, let me say this. I imagine how different Joseph's story would have been if he had yielded to the sin of offense. But Joseph refused to let another sin affect his relationship with God. If anybody had a right to get mad, you would think Joseph. And understand, Joseph lost all his inheritance. He lost his freedom, but still had the right spirit to choose his response. Has anybody ever chewed on you before? Ooh. 
a question to ask you. What was your response? You devil, I'll take care of you with five knuckles. Wrong response. Oh, we're not getting nowhere, are we? Oh, well, you better believe we are. Friend, if Joseph had been offended, he would later have killed his brothers. He would have rehearsed his offense. Come on, friend. He would have waited for the day, friend, I'm going to get even. But, friend, I'm going to say this. There's something about Joseph. He just let it go. But Joseph said, his perspective was, but as for ye, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it good unto, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. My God, the spirit of an individual. My Lord, let's stand tonight. What do you mean, preacher? You know, I believe that it's only right to let God settle the balances instead of trying to do it yourself. And friend, and during Joseph's trials, he could not see that his offenses were preparing him to rule and would result in his family's salvation. I wonder by the actions we take and the responses that we take of how much of our family are we sending to hell? Think about it. I just want to get even, Pastor. Getting even don't cut it, friend. Getting even don't do it. You just don't understand the hurt, Pastor. I do understand one thing. I do understand who paid the price for you and paid the price for me. And friend, I've never taken the stripes on that Christ took on. I've never shed the blood that Jesus Christ shed. Paul had made the statement, but our affliction be light. You understand where I'm coming from? It's like that guy in that Instagram. The Lord's sitting next to him. Don't you see what I've done? Don't you realize the price I paid? Can't you forgive him? Can't you forgive her? Come on, church. Let's, let's talk to God right now. Why don't we all just come on around the front and stand? I wonder if we couldn't talk to the Lord for a little bit. Lord, if there's any heart that you can work on, I need you to work on mine. Lord, you said in the end there will be many offenses. Woe unto him that it comes through. I pray, Lord, tonight that you would minister to some in this place. Lord, there's been some that's been set back for years. Some may be this very week. I pray, God, would you talk to our hearts right now? Come on, church, let's talk to him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Work on us, Lord.